Courtney Dillon at CourtneyDillon.com. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine. Is my pes pesky, pescary, pesky <laughs> little boy there? Big boy. Yes. Hi, Hi, Mom. Hi, I love you. I love you, too. He's been oh. with you all day, it looks like. So. Oh, God, yes, he has. All mm -hmm. right. So um, we're going to uh, talk to Louise Hay. It's not Hayes, right? It's Hay. Hay, she says. Oh, thank you, Louise. I, you know, I, before I was even into anything spiritual, because, you know, I was quite skeptic. I mean, I'm closed minded and not a bitch about it, but, uh, you know, it took me a long time to warm over, uh, to warm up to things like this. But my sister, my elder sister, Terry, and even my daughter, Chris, my eldest daughter, and tarot cards when she was in middle school, but me, it took a long time. But Terry introduced me to you mm. and your work. And I was fascinated from from the very beginning. Um, so uh, we've got. She does say she's aware. That's part of the reason she's here today. She's oh, aware of your interest. Awesome. But, <clears throat> thank you. She says for having me. So we can we don't have to start out with questions. We can just ask. You know, hey, how are you? And what would you like to share? She says uh, that her message today is the same as it was on earth and it is to teach people how to love themselves yeah and that is very important and necessary in the world at the moment and she, her she says her message is simple but it it remains timeless and it is the most important thing for people to do i just thought about something that'd be a cool scalar energy thing to cure people of self-loathing. I found out we can do it for self-confidence and selfishness and narcissism and all that kind of stuff. So I'll ask. All right, so um, now that you're in spirit with more knowledge, is there anything else you taught while you were alive that you would like to clarify or change for that matter? She's saying she has through many uh, channels come through recently. Uh, to just to add on to her work. But the work, she says, it's not that she needs to really add anything to it. It stands the test of time because much of it was channeled, she shows me. Really? Yes, yeah, she was a channeler in her own right, although she did not call herself that. But much of the information regarding health of the physical body and the energetic reasons the energetic reasons why people uh, are sick is based on uh, channeled information. Wow. Do you know, were there several that you were channeling information from? I was channeling information from my higher self mm. and source itself. It was not a particular being, but rather uh, the vast uh, unit information that is available to each and every person in the cosmos. Wow. Uh, would you consider yourself or were you at the time a healer or a, mostly an important? I call myself a teacher yeah. because I give people the ability and the knowledge so that they can heal themselves. We are all our own healer. If we understand ourselves as a part of source energy, yes, through the through the uh, such methods as changing a person's thoughts, changing their beliefs, changing their lifestyle, diet, etc., one can heal themselves. So no, I am not a healer in the traditional sense. It's almost like a guide, and yeah, she shows me a path. Mm -hmm. she, to heal themselves. Yes. she shows me a path how she helped many get on the path and continues to do so oh nice very nice so um i don't know i could be way off base but it seems like a lot of disease is caused by what well, could be bleed through from other lives etc but but also from just a, a lack of self-love and forgiveness she says that is the main cause of disease. What we perceive in the, on the, in the physical level as disease mm -hmm. is really uh, various belief systems 
or emotional energy, trauma. It can be a variety of sources. But it is always important with any ailment in the body to look for the emotional and energetic cause. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it doesn't have to be from this life, although it probably usually is. But you know, this trauma, they, they tear up your energy. Loss tears up your energy. And I guess it does allow some bad critters to come in, like negative entities and things like that. Are they in part the cause of disease or are they sometimes a cause, but mostly for the ones that increase it? Or tell me how- The focus of my work is mainly on a person's thoughts and belief systems. Yeah. Sure, well, there can be other factors contributing to disease. There can be so-called entities, mm -hmm. but in truth, entities are often belief systems. Oh. Our belief systems can be walking monsters. Wow. Oh my God, that is so true. Well, um, you know- Do not give power to these so-called entities. I'm not saying they're not real. I'm not denying their existence. I understand the truth of these beings. However, I see that there is an aspect of humanity that can become disempowered when they become fearful of these entities outside of themselves. Rather, it is more important to examine your own thoughts and beliefs. Exactly. That gives you power. Yeah. That is true it, power. Your choice. Why would you want to, do you really want to give away your power to these, to fear of these things? No, reclaim your power. It's yours. You are a sovereign being. You are whole and part of God. Absolutely. You fine. And you guys, mm -hmm. you all deserve all of that. And so love is, you know, this, they have nothing on love. These things, they have nothing on love. And now when I, with my energy work, when I, er with not just me alone, eradicate these, these things, I re make sure that's replaced with love and light so that, you know, there's no place for them anymore. So that's very important. Love is, is so important. What do you think about Bruce Lipton and his biology of belief? I guess, you know. You, it is powerful work and it is work that is in alignment with what uh, many who come before him have been saying. He is simply providing scientific evidence and research to um, support what we have been saying. His work is wonderful. Yes. Bella is clamoring up my leg. She wants to get, you know. Yeah, it's amazing work. Um, so basically, I, my belief is that thoughts are so important and people you need to be aware of what you what you are thinking if you put trash out there you're gonna get trash back but <clears throat> on the physics level thought consciousness collapses the Schrodinger equa wave equation so that waves i.e light which is everything um collapses into particles photons and particles are the building blocks of reality and so that's how it all happens including the thoughts that are so powerful, you can change your own DNA. I experienced this. Yeah. I cured yeah. myself wow. through changing my thoughts. It was a gift to get sick. It was a gift because exactly. I was able to uh, so-called put my money where my mouth is. I decided I am going to heal myself now. This is what I teach people to do. And now this is what I'm going to do. Every aspect of my life, I took a hard look rather at every aspect of my life and decided, what do I think about this? What do I believe? Now, it included changes on all levels, my diet, my activity, taking care of my physical body. Yeah. But the most important thing a person can do and begin with is learning to change their thoughts yeah. and learning to love themselves. All else, all manifestation, so-called manifestation, everything that people focus on of what I can learn to receive is the most important cornerstone is learning to love yourself. Yeah. 
I know that I was worried about uh, my nurse, who actually was my parents' nurse, and she gave me my kindergarten shots. She kept on asking my parents, and then of course me, please check me for colon cancer. Check me for colon cancer. It's like negative, negative, negative. Anyway, so I, you know, retired from that practice. And then years later, she was dying of colon cancer. And I think she just like Betty Jo, I think she just thought it into existence. Or maybe it's because she had a premonition and was psychic. I don't know. How do you tell the difference? A thought repeated many times will materialize in the physical world. Yeah. Possibly not in the way you've expected, but an effect will occur. Wow. If I think I do not have enough money, where will I get my next pay paycheck? I do not have enough this. I do not have enough that. You will experience lack in the material world. Yeah, lack, the uh, law of attraction and all that. Mm -hmm. All right, so can you tell us how, what started you on this journey? It is hard to pinpoint the exact moment the journey began. Yeah. I experienced a very, very difficult childhood. Oh. One could call me a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. I did not step into my role as a teacher until much later in life. It came after a series of blessings, what she calls blessings, including getting sick. Uh, she has she has cancer. She shows me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And healing myself Ooh. from cancer. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So I experienced physical, emotional trauma as a child. Yeah. And overcame that through the help of she's showing me uh, several teachers that she worked with. But she really, something changed powerfully for her when she really understood the need to love herself and change her thoughts. Yeah. You know, love is a very powerful transmuter of energy. And I had a, a hypnosis session with Jane McDougall and found out that, you know, I had this galactic thing where I was a healer, hybrid kid, I can't remember. I have to listen to that again. But anyway, so that was had the gift of using love to transmute energy. And I do believe that's what you're saying right now is that you, the power of love, love heals all. Is that kind of what you're saying? Love is what we are made of. It exactly. is the very fa fabric of creation. Yeah. When we love that which we have created because on some level you decided all aspects of yourself yeah now you might have chosen a certain personality to learn or certain experiences to grow you may say well why would i choose those parents why would i choose that brother or sister in truth you've chosen it all yes You've chosen it all yeah. to experience a return to who you are. Which is love. We're Which here. Love. Eric has said two things that, first of all, we are here to remember how to love mm. yourself, but also most importantly, to remember that we are love. So he's echoing your sentiments exactly. All right. So here's another one. Please describe what your life is like in detail on the other side. What dimension do you reside in? Do you visit with your dear friend Wayne Dyer and collaborate with him on different projects? Uh, she's going to stop. She's going to stop. She stops you right there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, she's laughing. And she said, Wayne and I remain close friends. They are soul, uh, they have soul contract to work together. And that's why they work together in this lifetime. Uh, Wayne also says hello. Now he pops in. Hello. <laughs> and she she says she resides in all dimensions simultaneously, as do you, my friend. Oh my God! Is yeah. everybody everybody resides in all dimensions? We are all multi-dimensional beings, after all. Yeah, that's true. All right. Part uh, of part of remembering yourself is understanding the vastness of who you are. Oh wow. Wow, that's amazing. Well, if we're whole and part of God, like a hologram, 
It's you like, cannot be separate from God. No, separation is an illusion. Eric uses the analogy of um, one of those hippie necklaces that's a hologram with a skull on it. And if you, mm -hmm. that's for the guy, God is a skull, whatever. If you break that and you look at each fractal, you will see the entire skull. So that's what we are. We're whole and part of skulls of God. Anyway. All right. So what do you guys do over there together? Do you do any, can you, did you teach humans down here? Give them guidance? What, what do you do? Uh, she's asking if you're, you're asking about Wayne and her. Or yes. Wayne and, oh, okay. Or you, or separately. I don't care. Mm. Separately. Uh, Wayne. She says she's hard at work all the time. <laughs> She, she shows me even in her late eighties, she was doing like so many things. I'm just busy, busy. She continues to be busy on her spiritual growth, mm -hmm. her ascension process. Yeah. She works with Wayne. Mm -hmm. She comes through to various channels such as this channel and various others. And she has much in the works these days. Good, of course, mm -hmm. busy like me. Mm -hmm. So um, what, um, why did you decide to die when you did? It was simply my time. I was not afraid of what we refer to as death yeah. and understood the vastness of my soul yeah. and spirit. And it felt, uh, as funny as it sounds, it felt like a return home. She, she shows, shows me that actually she celebrated death and felt it was joyful. Oh, of course it is. It's easier mm -hmm. than birth. So let me ask you this. What was, can you describe your transition? I just, my transition. Uh, so she wants to use this as a kind of a moment to teach. A person's yeah. transition will mirror their belief systems yeah. and the way they live. Yeah. If they live with the belief that life is wonderful and everything is working out, then the transition will mirror those and echo those beliefs. If a person believes that life is horrible and hard and death is awful, then a person's death will unfortunately mirror those belief systems. Yeah. I believe that life is wonderful, that life is a gift that it is a gift to be in a body, but it is also equally a gift to leave a body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw each moment as a blessing. That is a lesson. That is a teaching. I taught people and teach people to believe that life is a blessing, an incredible blessing. Simply look around. Mm -hmm. Being in a physical body, in the physical world, how wonderful. Yes, that's what we're here for. So we can, again, remember that we are love. She so, wants to say something. Yeah, Even but, when we feel we suffer, yeah. observe all suffering from the perspective of spirit. Even if you hurt yourself, you could understand. Um, she's showing me like if you have a something like a leg injury, for example. Okay. Use that as a moment to say, spirit is giving me an opportunity to rest. Mm. It's all can, about perspective. It's all about perspective. Everything is. And, and the belief that death is gonna be awful, you're gonna go to hell, all that stuff. It, it, it's, it's all about thought creates reality. So please change perspective, people. Like in mine, the way I got rid of my suffering from my child abuse, all well, I've heard this story many times. It was so horrible, my childhood, but not because I learned how to love and be compassionate and assertive. And it was a contract. So if I, if I hadn't gone through that, it, I mean, it was a gift. That's what I'm saying. Just like you're saying, mm -hmm. even in suffering, suffering, it's a gift that you mm -hmm. have to tweak your perspective and, and look at it as a teachable moment that you can actually be grateful for. All right. So according to your, your, you based on your life experience, which is the most powerful, which is the most powerful manifesting tool that has never failed you and gave results every or almost every time. The, even the idea of manifestation. Yeah. Manifestation is simply a mirroring of your own belief systems. Okay. 
Okay. Understand this. What you believe will be shown back to you in physical reality. Mm. Okay. Is there, are there any practical tips we can use? Mantra Practically or speaking, yeah. learn to see your life as a blessing. Learn to appreciate what you have in this moment. She's showing me, and um, she's been kind of teaching me lately, but she's showing me, uh, you know, taking her bills and being grateful for them. Yeah, I draw the line of that, Louise. I'm, nope. I'm paying bills. But she, but the more that we offer gratitude for the gifts of life, the more that we appreciate what we have, we, oh, she shows me, we open the door for more of that. Uh. It's like when we look around and see, uh, we criticize and we see what we don't have. Yeah. We are sending out that particular energy of not having. So in order to manifest, what we what you refer to as manifest focus and appreciate that which you already have yeah mm -hmm. that opens the, uh, the window for more absolutely is it true that folk that positive focus heals it all or is it better to face the pain and work on it or with it Ooh, just a good i am not saying to bypass your pain no but you can learn from your pain I guess. you can absolutely uh, she, she wants me to clarify, you learn from pain, work with pain, transmute pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you are experiencing pain, experience it fully. Yeah. Do not run away or avoid. Yeah. However, pain is also a teacher. Yeah. What am I learning from this? What gift does this pain teach me? That's a hard one. I recognize, yeah. especially with well, physical and emotional pain. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. But the more that we learn to transmute and see each, it's like mining for gold. She shows me. Oh. It's see each of these experiences as teachers. The mm -hmm. more we can evolve our consciousness into who we really are. Yeah. All right, what new knowledge about self-healing or healing in general do you have to share with us? I mean, what have you learned now on this entire topic that you didn't know when you were in a body? I have learned much <laughs> since I have been in a body, but however, I've been in the body many times, Some as you can imagine. Us. Yes, of course. I understand the essence of pure love more uh, experientially. Mm. I understand um, she's showing me that she had a really uh, beautiful meditation practice, mm. but that there's something that has developed over over time. Yeah. What we experience is time rather, but that has developed developed since she crossed over. Yes. Okay. Yes. She understands simplicity even more. Mm, I love simplicity. The power of being quiet. The power always of going within for each and every so-called problem. That's good. And not hide from it. Learn from it. Mm -hmm. See it is valuable. Show gratitude for it. That's how suffering goes away. Thank you for this. This is what I've learned. Bye-bye. Surrender. All right, so um, I remember I was uh, hiking in Memorial Forest Park Forest, and I was so clumsy. I mean, but I'm just known for my clumsiness. So I fell and I hurt my knee so bad. It was uh, gotten really big. And I was out of cell phone range in the deep in the middle of the forest. So I was like, let's see. Well, I heard about this thing called energy healing. So I didn't know very much about it, but I decided to visualize white light, just, you know, healing and all, mm. down to the cell level, the ligaments and all that stuff. And I really saw my knee shrinking down to normal and the pain completely gone. I wasn't able to walk, but I did that and I was able to. So I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. You are under, what you did is what every human on earth can learn to do for themselves. Absolutely. 
Yes. Our thoughts are things, actual realities. Yes, it's energy mm -hmm. that can transmute energy. Energy can transmute energy. I you mean, are a gifted healer as well, I will say. Oh, I don't know. What? I'm learning. I'm learning. No, no, no. No, no. Watch when you say, oh, no. Own this about oh, yourself. Please, there we go. I'm thought. I'm bad. Bad, Lisa. Bad, Lisa. But I've been trying with my scalar energy work. Try to, I was told to, say, to try to put love into the healing. And it really seems to make things go a lot quicker to just imagine just taking the intense script and weaving it with love. And I start crying when I talk mm -hmm. about the people I'm healing. I love, I help, I heal X person. And I start crying in love. I feel so like their mother and I just pour my love into the, with the intense script. So I don't know, I think it maybe worked. All right, so um, through one of your books, learned that Louise became pregnant at a young age and gave her daughter to a couple who cared for her during her pregnancy. Did Louise ever reconnect with that child? And how do you see that experience with a uh, spiritual perspective? If you don't I'm, want to share, that's fine. Yeah. I've shown a reconnection occurred, um, but because of the privacy of, oh, yeah. no, no, no. she doesn't want to go into that. No, of course not. Mm. Can you see it from, can you share a spiritual perspective? Yeah. It? I'd be happy to share a spiritual perspective. Let's Something see. will teach us. That experience was what I felt very painful. Yeah. I was in a very difficult position in my life. Oh. And I carried pain for many years. Yeah. I came to a place of healing and understanding for both myself and the situation. I understand now that my daughter chose her parents on a soul level. And it was meant to be as it was. Was it a lesson for you or for? It was a lesson in my own forgiveness. Yes. Self-forgiveness. That's a big one that I've had to struggle with. And I think a lot of people do. I'm wondering if you're an earth angel, or if you were an earth angel, you know, there's, well, I, I don't want to put a label on it. Cause you know, I know how y'all feel about labels, but you know how some people purposely come in with a much higher energetic vibration because they know they got some shit on their plate for incarnation and they need to be able to survive it basically. And, and, and so I'm, I'm just wondering if I chose, I chose a difficult, difficult in path in my early childhood. Yeah. Including uh, sexual abuse. Oh yeah. Very difficult path. Yeah. And I chose that path so that I could heal from it and help others heal. So I am not a healer. I am a teacher. But you I are show people the way. Self, right? I teach people to heal themselves. And but I healed myself. You heal yourself, but you don't, you're saying that you're not, you, you weren't in it to heal other people, but to empower them to heal themselves. Yet you were able to heal you like, yeah. like everyone can. Yes. If I can heal myself, so can you. That is part of the reason I chose such a difficult life. Yeah. It didn't end difficult because I got a, con I got a hold of my thoughts. Yeah. There's sort of, she, she started like showing me, it's like taming a wild monkey. Oh so God, I know girl, I can preach it to the choir. I got monkey brain. All right, so, so did you come in as a, I mean, would you say like, I don't want to, uh, the equivalent of an earth angel, you had to come in with a higher vibration? I came yeah. in with a large assignment. Yeah. That is true. Okay. And many of much of the work that is coming now yeah. is a continuation in some respects of some of my teachings. Okay. Affirmation work, mirror work. However, I am not what you would call an angel. Yeah. I am a human being. Well, I mean, in human it's, form. It's just a label. It's, it's based on energetic frequency basically i i we all have the ability to change our frequency oh, of course mm -hmm. please can you explain why telling yourself you love yourself in the mirror works 
I fake it till you make it. I think. I think that's a simple. No, way. no, no. Okay, it right is there. because it is because you observe what surfaces. Oh. For example, if you say, "I love myself in the mirror," and all of these feelings of unworthiness oh. Oh. surface, oh, that's smart. It is an example, a mirroring of that which needs to be transmuted on the energetic level. Yeah. If it is too difficult to say, I love myself, I love myself, I'm willing to like myself today. Yeah. Start where you can. Baby steps, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can, can you be specific? I like this about myself. I hate everything else, but you know, don't say that, don't say that. But I you, found I mirror that. work to be the most transformative and powerful tool because people have to face all of the things that they deem and label unworthy. Yeah. I am too this, I am too that, I am too fat, I am too short. Yeah. Look in the mirror and observe the magnificence that you are. Yeah. Oh, I love that, that is so powerful. Um, Please describe what the non-physical looks like. Everything is energy. Yeah. Um, she's showing me it's, uh, she's using the word luminescent. Mm. There's a lot of, uh, when she looks around, things glow in a different way. You can materialize and dematerialize depending on your thoughts. Oh, yeah. Have you met Eric? Of course. And Why do you think I am here today? Well, I don't know, but have y'all connected before? What do you think about him? Do I need to gulp or whatever? I mean, what do you think about my boy? Eric is a wonderful teacher. Yeah. To many. To many. He's taught me a lot. Mm. Um, have you encountered any ancient deities like goddess uh, Astarte? If yes, what do you think of people still worshiping these ancient deities? I have encountered so-called deities, yeah. but observe yourself as a deity. Yeah, this keeps coming back, doesn't it? Yes. Simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're whole and part of the, we are divine. Each and every one of you guys, it's God, okay? Many of the programs on earth related to worshiping uh, someone outside of yourself. Yeah. They are beginning to dissolve and disintegrate now. I think so. Is that part of what's happening with the age of Aquarius? Oh, yes. I was the, I was the forerunner to the age of Aquarius. Oh, you were. Oh, my God. I can see that. So it was Wayne, and so were many other teachers. Yeah. We help usher in. We are aware of the new energy, but do not get to experience such drastic transition as you are experiencing now. Yeah. Uh, is Sylvia Brown with you? Uh, not at the moment. No, yeah. I have met yeah. Sylvia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you work with her at all or just, Hey, what's going on? Let's go have a beer. Um, she's laughing. She doesn't drink much. Um, I do not work with Sylvia directly. Okay. Although we have met. Okay. According to the Bible, are we living the end of end times? Yeah. Ends of, uh, ends you are living in the age of great awakening. Yes. You are living in the most exciting time on earth. If you change your perspective, yeah. will it be difficult at times? Yes. Is it challenging? Of course. Did you sign up for this task? Most certainly. Yeah. All right. So um, are you saying that it's all about perspective, of course, so that some people in humanity are going to go through this awakening and ascend while others who choose not to, and that's contract, I'm sure too, will not ascend? Each person, and when you say ascend, Let's be clear. Ascend means the expansion of your consciousness oh. through, through the heart center. Go within. 
There is no ascension into the sky, oh, into no. another place, no. into another earth. It is oh. all here. What? Is it she just wants it to, she wanted to clarify that because some of your listeners are maybe a little confused still. Yeah. So one thing, there are many who are choosing not to awaken. It is not for you. She's meant you like everyone. Yeah. To judge who and who will who will not awaken. Yeah. It is simply our job to love. Oh wow. So is there a reason why some do not choose to awaken? Is it fear? Is it because it's contracted? Is it because they're teaching others who are awakening that they can't save everyone? I mean, what is it behind the people who choose not to expand their consciousness? Some I, who choose not to awaken yeah. have chosen this role to assist others in their awakening. It's right. like contrast. Yeah. Some are uh, just not at a point in their higher uh, development to choose to awaken in this lifetime. Okay. Will everybody eventually awaken? We are all headed to the same place eventually. Which is she's showing me back to source. So how does one who chooses not to awaken teach someone who is who is awakening? I don't understand that connection. I kind of do, but it is not your job to teach necessarily. It yeah. is your job to love. Well, by contrast, these people who are not descending, maybe there's a family member, etc. You don't know. You do not know. Your energy simply being in the energy of god source frequency universe will assist others in their awakening it is not necessarily through words or through action no 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 i'm mm -hmm. saying what you said was through contrast people who are ascending will learn something from those who choose to at least at the moment not awaken yes that is true so it's, it's, it's kind of she's trying to show me it's like um let me try to explain she's saying that there are people who have just simply chosen to play the part of those not awakening and for some reason it provides like some contrast needed for some people that are waking up in this life oh i see like comparison like wow I'm, yeah, but I'm awake. It's actually Maybe she's saying it's where you are. Exactly. And she's saying it's much more complex than we oh, understand. God, I imagine. Yeah. All right. Did you have any past or future life as a, a healer, as a Native American, in a European life? I mean, I guess <laughs> she's saying she's laughing because there's so many things. Uh, okay. She shows me, yes, she had a one life as a Lakota woman, a female Lakota woman. Okay. Um, so she brought through some of the energy into this lifetime from that particular lifetime. So that was a, uh, what she would, she will agree that she would call herself a healer in that lifetime. Well, let's talk about that. What is the most significant other life, past or future, that most influenced your life as Louise Hay? Can you tell us? Uh, she's saying that life was very significant. Wow. Um, it was the teachings of... Um, white uh, buffalo medicine woman calf woman excuse me um which is the she would she learned the sacred teachings um and she a lot through pipe ceremony but she understood in this lifetime the connection the interconnection of all beings everywhere oh. and we're one and part of the collective of god of everything and we mm -hmm. are everything so uh is there anything else you else you want to share about that life or will that do it that's sufficient okay she shows me another life of standing on a podium mm -hmm. and she is a, a teacher and that's another a male she's a man in this lifetime it looks like a sort of like a village but she's uh, raised up on a podium and she's teaching so she has a very strong connection as a teacher as well. Okay. So, uh, was that in America, Europe, another planet? Uh, this looks a uh, Europe. Let's see. Okay. She's showing me around like Germany area. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
right a lot like in the 1900s 1800s uh i'm seeing 1600s okay uh, all right, so do you have any, well, first of all, I want to ask something I'm going to forget if I don't ask it now. All right, so, you know, you say you need to take care of your body with nutrition, but aren't we powerful enough to be able on our own to take the things in our body, biochemicals, elements, organic, inorganic substances, reassemble them in order to optimize our own nutritional status? Yes and no. While that is true, most humans are not at that ability level at the moment. Okay. It is important to understand the frequency of that which you ingest. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but I think that if you, it's possible, in other words, to change the frequency of certain things that you ingest. If, for example, if all you have to eat is something that is uncomplimentary to the physical body, bless it think it yeah you know, like she's showing me for example like a bag of chips or something well while you know maybe that's all you have to eat yeah just could be right could so she may be one of those no i don't I'm, I'm i'm more savory than sweet but she's saying if, if that's all you have to eat bless it and thank it for its service in your physical body however if you have choices yeah make wiser choices wise choices right I mean, look at breatharians. They don't, they just take the energy around them and ingest it. So uh, there's a lot of power. I mean, not everyone, I'm not there, but you know, uh, but yeah, that'd be cool. Save on some grocery bills. Do you have any advice for healers? Remember to focus on your own healing foremost. Notice what comes like up that. for you. Oh, wow. Because she's saying that sometimes we, we put on this role of healer yeah, uh, and we might think, uh, you know, to never get to the point where we think you're pro we're done, you know, like we're, we finished our, yeah. there was always something, always some thoughts, always something to improve upon. That's awesome. Of course, if, uh, I would also add, if I had a choice to teach to, for advice for healers is to and a lot of people, healers do this, is to in, uh, teach your clients to heal themselves, empower them, let them know that they have the power to do the same thing. That is that that is the point. And that is my role on earth yes. as well. Oh. And that is what I taught others to do. Any healer who believes I am the one that heals this person is mistaken in their belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. So what was your reason to not have children someone wants to know if you don't want to talk about that that's fine this it is. was a lifetime uh she shows me that it was a lifetime to focus on uh humanity as a whole humanity were your children yes okay do you have any regrets no regrets awesome my life was wonderful awesome were you here was there anything you were here to learn you taught so much I, but learned many lessons what was the most i over uh, she's showing me overcoming cancer oh, yeah. healing herself from cancer is the biggest lesson i learned oh anything else well you talked about self-forgiveness uh, that's something that i've i learned to love myself that, that is, is the most important thing any of us can learn and that has to do with everything else we just talked about. But your everything lesson to self forgiveness, your lesson to heal yourself, everything. Wow. Okay. So, um, so your mission, well, I know your mission already. Okay. So I'm finished, except for one thing we always like to ask. Um, you know, is there anything that nobody knows about you that's kind of fun to know? Like, like Marie Cal Calendar. I always say Marie Calendar. I'm hungry now. Marie, Madame Curie. Okay. <laughs> I gotta get me a pie. Anyway, um, that she had a teddy bear sewed mm. inside one of her big fluffy dresses, a skirt. Is, is there anything? Fun? I would say I love the idea of being an actress. Oh, cool. I did not, she, she might've been in a film, I think later in life she's showing me, really? but she, she did have a secret desire to be on, on film. 
Mr. Demille or Bill, whatever. The, you're she's ready for a close up. Awesome. Were you an actress in, or an actor in another life? Yes, yeah, she was one. Uh, she shows me she's on a stage and people are throwing flowers. Um, she she's is on a stage. Is that me? Mm -hmm. I don't care. But it uh, no. looks like, was it, it was an actress? No, she's showing me an opera singer. Okay, that's what it was, oh, opera singer. Okay, wow. That's but cool. she does love the theater and love all things related to theater. So that's one thing. That's awesome. Uh, Eric, do you want to ask her anything? No, he says you did a good job. Okay, Courtney, would you like to ask Louise anything? Um, I'm just asking if she has any final messages for, for oh, the group. Good. Oh, good. For, for humanity, period. Um, learn to love yourself fully. That is the most important tool that will benefit you on earth at this time. Wow. You know, I think a lot of people feel that would feel, oh, I can't love myself fully because that's very selfish. No, it is the first, most unselfish act. It is the, it put on your own oxygen mask first. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to fully and thoroughly love or help other people. So really, self-loathing is almost selfish. It is. It is. That is true. Oh. Love yourself even if you feel uh, shame. Yeah. Even if you feel pain, yeah. love yourself. You're lovable. All of you guys are very lovable. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any advice for what Eric and I and the rest of the divine team are doing and the, you know, with Atlanta Scaler trying to help people? Uh, remember, as I said, you know, she was saying, you said put on your own oxygen mask first. Continue to offer yourself the same grace and forgiveness and love that you offer others on a daily basis. Okay. That's awesome. All right, Louise, I love you so much. And thank you for doing so I love you too. Thank you. I really mean that. And Eric, I love you. Courtney, I love you. I this love is you. awesome. And uh, you guys, CourtneyDillon.com. You got to check her out. She's amazing. And we'll put all her information down below. Thank, thank you. Me. Thank you so much.